Now, when you're listening to these speeches and uh, leading this walkout and uh, reading these books and growing in effect, are you conscious, do you think, that I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be somebody someday. Hmm. I'm going to be different than my peers. Mm -hmm. That is, I'm going to exercise leadership in some way. You're not sure about a profession or a career, but somehow or another, I'm going to be exercising leadership. Are you conscious of this, do you think? To, to, in some small degree, mm -hmm. uh, I was. I mean, I'm still an adolescent and, and, sure. and growing and not quite sure what, what I'm going to be uh, doing. I played the guitar, and so I still fancied myself, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a, a, a lightweight musician. And but it was really, again, back at, at church, at St. Paul Church, uh, one of the things that Bishop Ford did in the uh, breakfast club was he discovered that, uh, you know, we would leave breakfast club, we'd all sing a uh, song in unison, lift every voice and sing, and then we'd go to Sunday school. Mm. Uh, you know, these are co-educational, age-divided classes. One day, there was a complaint from one of the female Sunday school teachers about boys disrupting the class, two or three boys. And it got to be so disruptive over several weeks. She went and reported this to Bishop Ford. She was just, she was in tears, so I'm not sure what these guys had done. Well, this was significant enough for him to leave. He, at this point, he's in his office. He leaves the office comes down and finds me. I'm seated in a class of, of uh, young adult men, mm. myself, so I'm a student, and, and picks me out and says, follow me. And this morning, I'll never forget, he went to each of these classes scattered throughout the church and, and the dining hall and asked these teachers, largely female teachers, are there any boys in here who are giving you a problem? And we'd look there, and you know, the little girls in the class would were, were chuckling, and, and mm -hmm. as everybody sort of identified the the boy, mm -hmm. and he, he one by one, in some cases two out of that class, and it was kind of we went along there, following behind me, mm -hmm. I'm behind Bishop Ford, so it was sort of Pied Piper as mm -hmm. we went one by one to class by class, and the line grows longer. Finally, about thirteen guys, mm -hmm. and then uh, Bishop Ford takes us to another part of the church under the. Uh, the choir stand, isolated area, and says, all right, uh, you know, Brother Franklin, you're now in charge of these young men, mm -hmm. and you will have your own class, and uh, I want you to, uh, I don't want to hear any more about problems and disruptions from you mm -hmm. guys. So there I was, you know, mm -hmm. no curricula, right. <laughs> no experience, and uh, sort of with uh, what they are regarded as the most problematic and mm -hmm. at-risk kids in the, in the church. So we started slowly, and you know, I'm not quite sure where I, it occurred to me to allow these guys to tell their, their story. So part of it was an introduction ritual. Mm -hmm. And it went on for so long, we couldn't get to all the guys that first, that first hour, hour, 15 minutes, whatever we had. So the next Sunday, we came back and we continued. All right, you tell us your story. Who are you? Mm -hmm. What school you go to? What neighborhood you live in? And each guy. And one of the things that struck me as we were doing this, these guys never had that opportunity, to even just for a sort of five-minute platform to say, mm -hmm. this is who I am, this is where I'm from, etc. And so... You know, later in life, I discovered the importance of narrative and storytelling for people to feel part of, of an organization. So we continued, and then we expanded that because each week we'd come back and, you know, we'd read the, the, uh, the biblical passage that the rest of the Sunday schools mm -hmm. were discussing, and I'd say a few words about it, but then we'd quickly go to their stories. How has the week been for you? Mm -hmm. and these young guys, you know, these guys are, are 12, 13 years old are sharing stories about uh, being uh, roughed up by police, about being uh, uh, recruited to the gangs, about uh, seeing their mothers uh, uh, brutalized by boyfriends. And I thought, gee whiz, this is way over my head. But I realized it was important to allow these guys to, to, to talk through some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And what I began <clears throat> to see was these guys who were kind of the bad boys in the church and in the neighborhood would listen to each other mm -hmm. and, and were anxious to sort of get in and have their time. And they were really, you know, very candid about some of the things that they were struggling with. They had questions. Uh, 
you know, the kinds of questions boys would have. Uh, you know, how do babies get really get made? And, and mm. so it gave me an opportunity. I'd have to go back and study up on my mm. own biology book. And I'd come back and give them a presentation. And we'd talk about, uh, you know, being responsible sexually. And, 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 and you know, it was just... It was really quite an extraordinary occasion, and I think it was in that context as sort of a teacher, mm -hmm. uh, young male leader, group leader, that uh, I really began to feel, this is something I'm supposed to do. I'm why, pretty good at this. Why did the bishop pick you? I, I, I don't know to this day. He, um, you know, I know that I was sort of one of his favorites, mm -hmm. but, uh, but one. I mean, there were a lot, mm -hmm. of, a lot of very talented young men in the church, and it was a surprise to me because I didn't live in that immediate neighborhood. It was kind of a tough neighborhood around, mm -hmm. around our church. And there were guys who lived in the Robert Taylor Projects who were members of our church, and guys who really knew the gang culture more firsthand. But I lived, you know, it wasn't a suburb, but it was out in the residential part of the city, many miles away, and so I didn't, I didn't feel adequate. I didn't feel like I had the... But, uh, but he thought you could do it. Yeah, yeah. He saw something in you, mm -hmm. or you had shown him something yes. that made him know you could do it.